At first glance, sand seems like the most boring thing imaginable. It is literally dirt that got lazy. It sticks to your shoes, it gets in your sandwich at the beach, and if you have ever tried vacuuming it out of a car carpet, you know it might as well be super glue. But here is the twist, sand is not boring. It is not cheap, it is not infinite. Sand is one of the most valuable, fought over, and quietly essential resources on Earth. It is the reason cities exist, the reason tech works, the reason entire economies can rise or fall. And right now, the world is running into a very weird, very real problem. We are running low on the kind of sand we actually need. No joke. Let's dig in. First things first, when we say sand, we do not mean just anything grainy and beige. Sand is not one uniform thing. There are many types of sand, and most of them are not useful at all. Take desert sand, for example. It looks cool, but it is practically useless for construction. Why? Because it is too round and smooth. It has been worn down by wind for thousands of years, making the grains so polished that they do not stick well together. If you try to make concrete from desert sand, it is like trying to build a house out of marbles. The kind of sand the world actually needs is angular, coarse, and gritty. The kind found at the bottom of rivers, lakes, and beaches. It is sharp enough to lock together when mixed with cement and water. And that kind of sand, we are running out of it. Here is something that sounds ridiculous but is absolutely true. Sand is in everything. It is in the concrete that builds our roads, bridges, and buildings. It is in the glass of our windows and smartphones. It is even in the microchips that power the device you are reading this on right now. In fact, sand is the second most consumed natural resource on Earth right after water. Just to build one mile of highway, you need around 38,000 tons of sand. A single house, a few dozen tons, a city millions. Modern civilization is built on sand, literally. And because cities are growing fast, especially in places like India, China, and parts of Africa, the demand for sand has exploded. As developing nations urbanize at lightning speed, sand has become big business. China alone used more cement between 2011 and 2013 than the United States did in the entire 20th century. Think about that for a second. That is how fast things are moving. Massive cities are being built almost overnight, and every one of them runs on sand. This has led to a booming black market for sand. Yes, there is a black market for sand. Organized crime groups in several countries are making billions from illegal sand mining. In some parts of India, sand mafias control entire rivers, and violence surrounding sand disputes has become deadly. We are not talking about corporate competition. We are talking about people getting killed over sand. This is not fiction. This is happening. Legal sand mining usually takes place in riverbeds, lakes, and coastal areas. Miners scoop out sand using dredgers, boats, or trucks, and then sell it to contractors and governments. But here is the problem. The demand far exceeds the legal supply. So illegal miners step in. And when they do, they often strip away sand faster than nature can replenish it. This can cause real damage like eroding riverbanks, destroying habitats for fish and birds, causing landslides, contaminating water supplies. In some regions, entire ecosystems have collapsed because too much sand was removed too fast. This is not just an environmental issue, it is a human one. Villages have been swallowed by erosion. People have lost homes. In some places, the ground literally gave out beneath them, all because of sand. Here is a twist that seems insane. Countries covered in desert sand like Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates actually import sand from other countries. Why? Because desert sand, as mentioned earlier, is too smooth for construction. It is like trying to build a sand castle out of powdered sugar. So Dubai, famous for its skyscrapers and mega projects, often buys sand from Australia. Yes, a desert nation imports sand to keep building. That is how specific and critical the right kind of sand is. One reason people rarely think of sand as a valuable resource is because it feels infinite. Go to the beach, dig a hole. Plenty of sand. Wrong. The sand you see at the beach is a tiny fraction of what we need to sustain our infrastructure, and it takes nature thousands of years to produce usable sand. Rocks erode slowly, water breaks them down over time, rivers transport the grains, and eventually you get sand good enough for concrete. But we are extracting it in months, not millennia. The imbalance is massive and growing. It is like drinking an entire lake through a straw in one day, then wondering why it is not refilling. Here is the scary part. Sand scarcity is already driving up construction costs in many countries. Cities are having to import sand from farther away, which means more fuel, more carbon emissions, and higher prices for homes, roads, and infrastructure. If sand becomes too scarce or too expensive, entire economies could stall. Imagine not being able to build housing fast enough. 
or not being able to repair roads and bridges, or tech manufacturers struggling to source silicon-grade sand for microchips. This is not science fiction. It is happening right now in parts of Asia and Africa. And unless better solutions are found, the global demand for sand could start shaping geopolitics the same way oil once did. That might sound dramatic. But so did the idea of fighting wars over oil back in the early 1900s. And we all know how that turned out. So how did we end up in a world where sand is becoming a strategic resource? And what are countries doing to deal with the crisis? Because the story does not end here. When we left off, we were staring at a global problem hiding in plain sight. The world needs sand. Huge amounts of it, but the kind we actually need is disappearing fast. And while that might not sound like a crisis compared to, say, climate change or nuclear war here, let's take a look at how governments, industries, and scientists are scrambling to rethink the most overlooked resource on Earth. Can we just use something else? Well, sort of, but it is not easy. Sand is not just filler. It has very specific properties that make it irreplaceable in many cases. It is hard chemically stable, and when mixed with cement creates a binding structure that lasts decades. Still, researchers have been looking for alternatives. Some promising candidates crushed rock, grind up larger stones into sand-sized particles. Recycled concrete break down old buildings to reuse their materials. Recycled sand tends to be lower in quality, but it is a start. Foundry sand a byproduct of industrial metal casting. Ash-based fillers made from coal combustion residue. These substitutes can work in certain situations like paving roads or building sidewalks, but often they are more expensive, less durable, or harder to scale than natural sand. And in the construction industry, especially in fast-growing nations, scale is everything. And as demand grows, so does the pressure to expand these systems. Tech to the rescue. You knew this part was coming. Some startups and university labs are looking at ways to engineer sand or even 3D print building materials that reduce the need for traditional concrete. For example, geopolymer concrete, an alternative to Portland cement that uses industrial byproducts and less sand. Microbial living bricks made by bacteria that bind particles together seriously. They grow like coral. Desert sand reprocessing, using tech to reshape smooth grains into usable building sand. These are real things, not science fiction. But again, scale is the issue. Right now, these technologies are cool experiments, not global solutions. And until they scale, natural sand remains king. As sand becomes more valuable, the fight for it has turned darker. Illegal sand mining has exploded in parts of Southeast Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Smugglers steal sand from protected beaches at night. They bribe local officials. They falsify records and export sand labeled as construction gravel. In Cambodia, entire islands have been stripped of sand and effectively vanished. In Morocco, over half the sand used for construction is estimated to come from illegal sources. This is not just about environmental harm. It is about corruption, exploitation, and violence. Some have even started calling it the sand wars. And like any black market, the more profit there is to be made, the harder it becomes to regulate. Here is something most people have never considered sand can be a matter of national security. Think about it. If a country cannot source enough sand, it cannot build housing. If it cannot build roads, it cannot move goods or people. If it cannot make concrete, it cannot repair critical infrastructure. In the long run, sand shortages could trigger migration economic decline or even resource conflict, especially in densely populated regions. Some governments have already taken notice. Indonesia has banned sand exports to protect its coastlines. Singapore, heavily reliant on imported sand, has spent billions on land reclamation and sand stockpiling. India has formed task forces to combat illegal mining, but with limited success. In short, sand is starting to move from construction material into the same category as water, oil, and food. Things countries fight to secure. Let's imagine the future, say, 30 years from now, if no major solution is found. What might change? Housing costs rise even faster, especially in urban areas. Poorer nations fall behind because they cannot afford imported sand. Environmental degradation worsens as more ecosystems are stripped. Innovation slows as tech firms compete for high-purity silicon sand. It sounds extreme, but remember, people said the same thing about oil in 1910. The good news, we are not helpless. There are several things that can make a huge difference. Better regulation governments enforcing sustainable mining practices. Public awareness people realizing sand is not free and unlimited. Urban design reform cities using fewer materials through smarter planning. The key is shifting how we see sand, not as background noise, but as a critical building block of modern life. Once we do that, the solutions become a lot more possible. If this whole topic surprised you, you are not alone. Most people never think twice about sand. But without it, our cities, our technologies, even our daily lives would quite literally fall apart. Sand is not flashy. It is not rare. It does not sparkle. But that is what makes it dangerous to ignore. Because the most valuable things in the modern world are often the ones we take most for granted until they are gone. And now, sand joins that list. It is time we started paying attention to what lies beneath our feet before it slips away.